In the last video, we looked at the behaviours of the most basic unit of language, sounds. Now, we're going to zoom out as far as we possibly can, and look not just at whole languages, but at a whole planet, bursting with more than 7,000 different languages. Moving on from phonology, we are going to be looking at macro-linguistics, looking at large-scale linguistic phenomena. But to do that, we must first discuss what a language is. The Collins Dictionary defines a language as a system of communication which consists of a set of sounds and written symbols which are used by the people of a particular country or region for writing and talking. There are three important things here. Communication, sounds and written symbols, and people from a country or region. It turns out that there are problems with every one of these points. Let me explain. There are many systems of communication, from traffic lights to Morse code, but not all of these are necessarily what we call language. As for sounds and written symbols, sign languages don't use sounds at all, and most languages on the planet do not have a writing system to go with them. Finally, speakers of a language do not all necessarily have to come from the same place. There are French speakers in Canada and many countries in North Africa that don't claim heritage to France at all. So now we know how complicated defining a language can be. This is because human languages are so diverse that it's not always easy to bracket them into a definition. Still, we see a lot of similarities between languages, especially those that are geographically close to each other. Why is that? This is because of language families, groups of languages that all come from the same ancestor. Here's how it works. Suppose we had a language spoken by a group of people that all lived in the same area. One day, a large number of those people decided to migrate away to faraway lands. As time passes, the languages and cultures of these split-up groups began to diverge and become less and less similar to each other. At one point, new languages emerged, all descended from one ancestral tongue. These languages are all part of a language family, and can be called daughter languages. A good example of this are the Romance languages, such as French, Spanish, Portuguese and Italian. All of these are descended from Vulgar Latin, the language spoken by the people of the Roman Republic and Empire since around 100 BC. All the Romance languages are genealogically related to each other, and so can be called sister languages. You can see this clearly in the sister words or cognates amongst these languages, such as the word for to sing and moon, especially if you compare against the Latin ancestor words. However, a genealogical relationship is not the only way two languages can be similar. Take our previous example. Suppose one of the migrant groups came into contact with another group. When two groups live together, their languages can influence each other in complex ways. A common way is borrowing words, which is when one language takes a word from another language and uses it as its own. With English and French, this happened a lot after the Norman Conquest. English borrowed words for all sorts of meats from French, like beef, pork and mutton. Today, loanwords from French make up more than half of all modern English words, making them very similar in their vocabularies. This sort of similarity is from contact influence, and is very different from the genealogical relationship that we saw before. In our example, contact influence doesn't make English related to the Romance languages. Genealogical relationships are established by systematic correspondences among words. You can't do this with languages with only contact influence, but you can with sister languages. So although a language like English has had a lot of Romance influence in its vocabulary, its roots are from elsewhere. In fact, it belongs to a different family called the Germanic language family, related to Dutch, Swedish, Icelandic, and of course, German. There are many such language families across the world, because as humans continue to migrate around the planet, languages continue to split and diverge. But what if two languages could merge? What would that look like? For the answers to these questions and more, subscribe to GeneSpeak and like this video to support my channel through these difficult times. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.